Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Welcome to this time of worship. As we gather, let us open ourselves to God's love and light. We have finished our Advent journey and welcome the Christ child again. I am Chitoka Wea, the seminary intern here at First Presbyterian Church. Our pastor, Cynthia Conran Carney, is on vacation this week, spending time resting and with her family. If you are visiting with us today, we welcome you and are glad that you are here. Please fill out a welcome card so that we can remain and be in touch with you. After worship, all are invited for a coffee and tea in Canoles Hall, the chapel. <clears throat> A reminder that the church office is closed this week so the staff can enjoy some world well deserved time off. The mail will be picked up. Another reminder is that starting in January, our congregation will be studying John Philip Newell's newest book together. Sacred Earth, Sacred Soul. There are copies available to purchase today for $21 each. All are invited to pick up a bookmark with the schedule. On this first day of the Christmas season, let us join together in singing our opening carol. Please stand if you are able. Joy to the world. Praise the Holy One, O you highest heavens, Son, 
moon, and shining stars. Let us praise the name of the Lord, the one who commands life and creates and gives life. Thanks be to God who established the universe and set the planets in their orbit forever and ever, who fixed the bounds that cannot be passed. Praise the source of love from the earth, all you sea monsters and all ocean depths, the fire, the hail, the snow, and the frost. Praise the one who commands the stormy winds. Oh, let each mountain, hill, fruit tree, wild animal, and fly bird give praise. Together, all people, lift your hands toward the heavens, old and young, young men and women alike. Let us give thanks and praise to the divine mystery that is most faithful. children, all that are available and here with us, may go downstairs now to learn a little bit more about the good Lord. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious one, who gives us all hope and courage to listen to your heart so that we may hear a word from you. Listen to the word of God. Our lesson today comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. Before the birth of Christ, the people in Luke's world felt disconnected from God. They were being persecuted and marginalized by the Romans. The Romans had God in the script and God in the sky but not God and the soul. The Gentiles were accustomed to a personal relationship with a God who cares. An intimate and personal connection with the God who was always right there. But just like us, they wanted God right now like microwave right now. <laughs> it takes time to wrap our heads around the fact that God loves us all so intimately that while we focus on our new normal, God has a personal gift for every last one of us, and it is called our next normal. If we don't take the time to let this text simmer, it will read like a tabloid story. A man taking his fiancée back home who is pregnant by someone else. The only place that they had to live was in a barn. They had no clothes for the baby when the baby was born with tattered cloths. 
All but thanks be to God. When you put on your spiritual specs, you will see that this is not a tabloid story. This is the story of the birth of Jesus. It is about a baby born in a manger. The Messiah, the source of the light of the world. Thank God for Cynthia, for sharing with Bob and me Kenneth Bailey's book, Jesus Through Middle Eastern Times, so that we could share it, that book with our Bible study group. <clears throat> Cynthia is kind of like a biblical canon on legs. <laughs> she always gives you a lot of information. Our Bible, our Bible study has grown into a deeper understanding and love for Christ. Bailey reminds us in his book that Joseph was a royalty because he was from the family of David in the village of Bethlehem, which the locals call the city of David. No matter where Joseph went, he would have been welcomed. And in those times, in every culture, Special attention and care were given to women who were pregnant regardless of their circumstances. Bailey goes on to say that for the Western mind, the word manger invokes the words stable or barn. But in traditional Middle Eastern villages, this was not the case. The manger was in the family room, what we call today the living room, where family members along with guests cooked, ate, slept, and lived. Where Mary and Joseph put the baby in a manger, a cutout for hay in the floor. Notice the top of the floor of this house was the guest room. In Greek, the word for the guest room is katalum, which means the upper room. Because Mary and Joseph were staying with relatives in Bethlehem during the census, the guest room was full. So Mary and Joseph stayed in the upper room. They just so happened to be near the animals. But oh, thank God, <laughs> there was room in the end. Not in a barn, and not in a stable, but in the upper room. I don't know if you've ever felt disconnected, but there is a common thread that ties all of us together. Along with the people in Luke's world, and that is our need to connect with an avenue one who can feel what we feel when we don't know what to say and when we don't know what to do. It can feel mighty lonely when life hits us suddenly and quickly, making us feel so helpless sometimes. But like Mary's baby, Christ, the Messiah, a bridge, an avenue, one who is traceable, found in Scripture, our certain connection to God. We must remain doubtless 
and trust in love that puts everything back together again. The nativity portrayed all over the world is of how the birth of Christ beams down upon all of us. I would like to tell you a quick story about Eric. In the early 70s, Eric was diagnosed with a learning disability at a very young age. And by the time he was in the second grade, due to his learning disability, he had to be separated from the class and put in another room. However, in those days, the other room was the closet in the classroom. And every day during lunchtime, another teacher would come in and relieve Eric's teacher so that she could take her lunch break. As months went by, as months went by, Eric's teacher would never put him in the closet when it was close to a lunchtime. Oh, one day, <laughs> one day, she forgot. And when the other teacher came in to relieve Eric's teacher, she kept hearing some bumping and thumping against the wall in the closet. At first, she thought she was hearing things, and the more she heard it, she asked the class, what is that? And there was this soft, collectively squeaky voices of children that said, that's Eric, as they pointed towards the closet. The teacher jumped up and ran towards the closet and she asked Eric, what are you doing in here? And Eric said, this is where I go to school. The teacher was not only irate, but she was also heartbroken to the point where she not only advocated for Eric to never be put in that closet again, but she also became an advocate for all children who had learning disabilities. She went on to go before Congress to tell them about Eric's story and to have monumental laws pertaining to how policies are designed to treat children with learning disabilities overturned. I have felt here at First Presbyterian Church of San Rafael the advocacy and the intimacy of Christ, serving and sharing with the church who does the mission work that serves Christ. I have had the opportunity to serve as a minister with the, with the, uh, the St. Quentin Death Row Ministry, Trans Heartline at San Francisco Theological Seminary, the Street Chaplaincy, and the San Pedro Elementary School Garden. And that's just a short list. Out of Mary came the grace and the eternal Savior of the world, the Holy Spirit, the one who finalized our continuum of faith, love, and hope. The one who reigns over everything, above, beneath, and all around, and has been decreed from all of eternity. Keep loving and caring for one another.
And when your light feels dim, know that somebody paid a debt for us that we could never repay. Jesus Christ, our advocate and intimate bridge, born in a manger, the light of the world, whose love brings everything, brings everything back together. like to invite you all now to feel free to share any thoughts that came to your mind about the sermon, about God being an advocate, having an intimate, personal relationship with God. And if you raise your hand, Angela will bring you the mic. Excellent sermon. I particularly enjoyed the slides of the different uh, countries and their image of the nativity. That was really poignant. I love that 
God is our advocate and God is in us. And that's why we must act uh, to be advocates for each other. And I thought your story of Eric was just spot on. It's up to all of us to be that teacher who won't leave that child in the closet. Thank you. And now, let us join in and sing Go Tell It on the Mountain. Please stand if you're able. This is our second Christmas carol. Welcome you now to uh, share any joys or concerns or prayers that you would like to ask for. It's good to see everybody here this morning. It's especially a blessing to welcome Diane and Jerry Kern's daughters, Pam and Karen. Would you just raise your hands? I couldn't help but think the other night uh, at the Christmas service, Christmas Eve service, that that was really a tribute to Diane because music was such a part of her life and she was such an important part of our congregation. So Karen and Pam, thank you for blessing us with your presence today.
I have a concern. Um, I was looking forward to leaving for the Yucatan on the 31st, but that trip was canceled, as so many trips for many people are being canceled right now. And I've been really mindful of the domino effect 